And when you're filming something like that and you have to be in that state, to be as real as possible um, every single day, um, it's, it's quite tough to shoot. But Particularly when you're staying in the same hotel where you're filming it. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we were staying, it was shot in Tenerife um, during Covid time, so it um, there were quite a lot of restrictions in the middle of nowhere. A hotel situation like that, it's a melting pot of people from all kinds of backgrounds and lifestyles. That's so, right. You know, you go to any, any hotel and you're all watching one another and trying to find out what one another, which is why it works so perfectly yes. mm. in this drama. Yes, well, the thing is, it's very relatable because everyone, to a lesser or greater degree, has gone to a sort of all-inclusive holiday resort with family or friends or mates or whatever, you know, and people are um, on the sun lounger reading their book, or looking at their phones, someone's in the pool, someone's at the cafe, someone's having a drink at the bar. It's just very ordinary and then suddenly all these shots ring out and from everywhere and people have to run for their lives. And there is that fascination, that psychological fascination with what would I do? Who would I be? Would I hide under the table? Would I grapple with the gun? Or would I protect my children or my partner? And we don't me? know. Will you, will <laughs> you would be first, John. But you don't know until you're there, do you? Until you're in it, how you behave. Exactly, exactly. And the thing is, when you say, uh, would I get my partner, you, you don't have time for that. One of the terrible things in a situation like this and in this drama is that um, the, the shots ring out and you have to run and you don't know where you, the rest of your family are. Mm. You haven't got time to say, John, come over here or kids, come with me. You know, you just run. So you, they spend the whole time not knowing what's happening to anybody else. And then living with decisions that you make at that time. Yeah, mm. Stay with yeah. and I think you're right. You know, one of the things is that you hope in a situation like that, maybe you'd be brave or maybe you'd assist someone else or what, but I mean, you actually don't know until you're in something like that. And the great thing about this drama as well is that it follows these ordinary people when they get back, you know, after they... Um, that's my bracelet just falling off. Oh, no, it's, it's nice mine. Spoon, no, it's your spoon. Oh, it's sorry. Um, <laughs> and I jumped. That's how <laughs> I'm feeling about this whole situation. Uh, yeah, so it follows them. When they get back home, which is a really important aspect of this, so you get to see the impact on ordinary people mm. caught up in an extraordinary situation. And having filmed it, having made it, having been through this experience, has it made you question when you're in a situation for fun, I don't know, in a restaurant like we're seeing now, or in a hotel, or in a crowd, do you start thinking, what would I do if something happened now to me in real life? Well, it, yeah, the thought has crossed my mind, but, the, you know, one of, the, one of the difficult things is that you just don't know what mm. you would do. You don't know what you would do. You hope you would do this, and you hope you'd do that, and you, you know, may have an idea. But actually, you know, if suddenly, for instance, if suddenly we would storm... someone stormed in here and started... You know, you have no idea what you're going to do. No. You don't know. You hope mm. that you'd find it in yourself to somehow be brave or be altruistic and help other people or whatever. But when you're in that extreme terror and uh, fight or flight and you have no idea where shots are coming from or what's going on, um, you can't imagine 